What's new in Capacitor 3.0 Beta? Welcome to another Code Swag video. In this episode, we're talking about the recent announcement of the public beta for Capacitor 3.0. If you don't already know, Capacitor is a native runtime that allows you to build apps using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and have those apps run natively on iOS, Android, and the web. So the release of this public beta is a huge deal for all those interested in building mobile applications using JavaScript. Plugins. Capacitor 3.0 brings with it a major architectural change. All Capacitor core plugins have been moved from the core project into their own NPM packages. This means that going forward, the plugins will be installed and versioned separately from Capacitor core. In order to update to the new plugins, you simply install the plugin package and then change the import from the old syntax to the new syntax. In Capacitor 3, the use of the plugins object is deprecated. Capacitor 3 brings an exciting new CLI command that allows you to run your app on iOS and Android devices in one step without having Xcode or Android Studio open, freeing up system resources and eliminating unnecessary context switching. Prior to this change, developers would need to keep Xcode or Android Studio open to deploy and would constantly switch between them and their main JavaScript editor. Now, those resource-hungry IDEs need only be used when writing native code, configuring native projects, or creating a release build for your application. How this new feature works is that you run the command npx cap run. This command will run sync to copy web assets into the appropriate folder in the native project. And then it will programmatically create a native debug build followed by deploying the debug binary to hardware or virtual devices using native run. Capacitor 3.0 brings several updates to Android and iOS. The minimum supported version of iOS is now iOS 12. So is the minimum required version of Xcode, Xcode 12. On the Android side, Capacitor has added support for Android 11 and will continue to support versions all the way back to Android 5. It is, however, recommended that you update Gradle in your Android apps and plugins to version 6.5. TypeScript config files. You can now use capacitor.config.ts files for configuring capacitor. Not only does this provide autocomplete and inline documentation of configuration values in your editor, but now you have the ability to use environment variables for generating configuration. This means that you can now create different environments for development versus production, provide different configuration values per platform, etc. The configuration file is passed every time you run the sync command, and then a new copy of the generated config is placed into each native platform directory, just like before. The Permissions API. Another big addition to Capacitor 3 is the brand new Cross-Platform Permissions API. Plugins that require permissions will now offer the Request Permissions and Check Permissions methods, which give app developers fine-grained control over which permissions are requested and when. It also gives app developers the ability to query the state of permissions for a given plugin. This is possible 
by grouping sets of permissions into aliases, which are maintained by each plugin. For example, the camera plugin has a camera and photos alias for accessing the camera and photo library respectively. As an app developer, you can request permission for the camera alias via the camera plugin, and the user will be prompted to grant or deny access to their camera. This can now happen at any time instead of only when the user tries to take a picture. Official plugins will continue to automatically request the necessary permissions before feature use, so no changes to your app are necessary in this regard. This additional functionality is completely opt-in. Android plugin autoloading. Do you ever forget to add those Java classes to mainactivity.java after installing Capacitor plugins? I do all the time. With Capacitor 3, you no longer have to remember to do so. The Capacitor CLI will now generate a file that lists plugins to automatically load when the app initializes. Android plugins now become available simply after installing them and running sync, just like iOS plugins. This behavior is opt-in, however, so you have to follow the upgrade guide below in order to enable it. Additionally, the Capacitor team has added a new Include Plugins option, which lets you configure which plugins to include per each platform, so the list can still be manually controlled. Upgrading to Capacitor 3.0 Beta If you want to upgrade to Capacitor 3.0 Beta, click the link to the upgrade guide in the description below. If you are a plugin author, there is also a guide for updating your plugins. Finally, I'd like to thank the Capacitor team and the Capacitor community for all the hard work that is making all this awesome progress possible. Well done, guys. You deserve a huge round of applause. Thank you very much for checking out this video and do check out the beta. Stay tuned for updates in the RC and the final release, which is coming in a few weeks. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Please like, subscribe, and tune in to Codeswag for more tutorials. See you next time.